Hello everybody and welcome back to Amateur Astronomy Storm Tracing. Man, it feels really good to say that. It's been so long now, almost three months really, since I've been out underneath a crisp, clear sky. Life is just, let's just say it's just been 2020, and I'm sure you guys know what I'm getting at. But uh, it's so nice being back out here where I belong. I've got my Skywatcher HEQ5 set up just here behind me, and I've had it going probably about an hour now already on a target that I've tried a couple times before. M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. M31 is a target that all amateur astrophotographers try to shoot. It's one of the biggest, brightest deep sky objects, and nearly every picture that you come across of it is just absolutely awe-inspiring. Now, I've tried it a couple times before, and honestly, my first shot at it has been my favorite one so far. My last one, I used the Orion Sky Glow uh, imaging filter, and for Nebulas, it seems like this filter works pretty well but for M31 it really it really knocked out a lot of the detail I feel like I took a couple uh, pictures earlier uh, using that filter and then I ended up taking it out and just comparing the two there really is no comparison you just pick up so much more detail I feel like without the filter I've really got the HEQ5 dialed in tonight uh, actually earlier I even popped off one five minute shot and it hardly any star traveling whatsoever so I guess I've got really lucky on my polar alignment tonight uh, I'm going to end up trying to take about 50 pictures I think at three minutes apiece which is going to be by far the most amount of data I've ever gotten on any target so I'm really excited to see how it comes out another thing too I've been messing with deep sky stacker here lately uh, I found a working version for my Mac which is an absolute godsend uh, I just really prefer the workflow of it compared to Nebulosity and honestly I like the results better from it too. I've been practicing in Photoshop. Here is one of the last shots that I managed to get. Uh, this is, was from back late in the summer with the same setup here. It's the uh, Lagoon and the Triffid Nebulas. I didn't get very much data on these but overall I feel like my editing brought out a whole lot and again in these I did use Deep Sky Stacker and just Photoshop. So I feel like from here on out, that's gonna be the way for me to go. M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, is in my opinion one of the most fun astrophotography targets that there is. It's so large and it's so bright, you can really tell whenever you got it in frame. Finding the Andromeda Galaxy is pretty simple. It starts rising in the late fall and early summer here in the northern hemisphere. And I always look for the constellation Cassiopeia in the northern sky. It kind of looks like an arrow as you can see here. And that arrow pretty much points right towards Andromeda. Another thing about M31 as well is seeing it rise it tells me that we're getting more towards the winter months. And there are so many targets in the winter sky that are by far my favorites. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves and see what I can get of Andromeda tonight. This is by far my least favorite step of astrophotography. Just carrying the whole rig back inside after a full night of shooting. But we're almost there. Okay, now my next step is to do my flat frames. I like to go in order, of course, light frames first, then dark frames. Then I like to do my flat frames and then finally come back and do my bias frames last. Because that way whenever I stick the memory card in the computer and all the images start to pop up, I can kind of my light frames separate my dark frames and my bias frames because otherwise 
the bias and the dart being right next to one another, it would kind of be hard telling which is which. I mean, I know you can go in and look at the data and everything, but I like to keep it as simple as I possibly can. And uh, for my flat frames, I use the white t-shirt method. And also, I use my laptop on just a white screen. There's actually a video on YouTube. It's like 10 hours of white screen. And so far, that has served me perfectly. So, to find the easiest way to do this is to just move my scope here, roughly, to where it's pointing straight up, give or take anyways. Take my lens cap off. Take my white t-shirt here. And I like to double it over because that way it diffuses the light just a little bit more. All right, now to actually shoot the frames, so I have the t-shirt on here, pull it down kind of tight. I lay my computer screen literally over just the top of the t-shirt there and just kind of let that rest set the camera into AV mode or aperture priority mode. But what the AV mode does is it lets the camera choose the correct settings uh, to get the correct exposure, like uh, shutter speed and all that good stuff without messing with your ISO. So the way that I do this is I just use my remote shutter release cable here and start taking pictures. and I'll sit here and take probably about 40 of them or so. Seems to be a pretty good number because these go really quickly right here. Okay, and now finally I'm gonna do my bias frames. Basically what the bias frames does, it removes uh, more of the signal noise uh, from the light frames whenever you go in and stack everything together. Uh, this noise is also contained in the dark frames, but when using DSLR cameras like I do, uh, people tend to have better luck. I mean, I know I certainly do, but by doing both uh, dark frames and bias frames, I know uh, people using like Astro dedicated cameras, there really is no need to do uh, bias frames, but I'm going to go ahead and do them tonight. It's like I said, hopefully this is going to be one of my best shoots yet. But yeah, basically to do bias frames, you completely cover up the lens cap, cover up the viewfinder, Make sure everything is really dark, and you'll want to go and set your camera into manual mode, and uh, basically just shoot at the absolute fastest shutter speed possible that your camera will allow. I think on this, and it's like a one eight thousandth. So yeah, I'm just gonna go in and start blasting off pictures again, 40 of them to match my flat frames. I don't know if that's a necessary thing to do, but. I'm kind of OCD whenever it comes to stuff like that, and I like to kind of keep my numbers even and everything. So, let's see, let me go in here. And find my manual mode. Alright. Alright, bulb. And then all the way up. One four thousand is actually the fastest this camera right here will do. And again, ISO stays the same as your lights, darks, and flats. And another thing you'll want to do here too is also cover up the viewfinder. That way you let in absolutely the smallest amount of light possible. Ideally, you want to do this in a dark area. I mean, you can see it's dark out. The only light on is the light here on my camera. But yeah, I'll turn that off here in a second as I'm doing these pictures. They cover up the viewfinder cover up your aperture and just start going at it and that's how you do your bias frames and yeah that's it for this sheet really I'm feeling really really good about it's not set it said so much data on Andromeda uh, no filter in there just crystal clear skies uh, polar alignment seemed to be just absolutely spot on whenever I went to do my star alignment it went right to it every time uh, I went in I, and looked at quite a few of the pictures there is just barely any star trailing and just a handful of them so yeah just over three hours of data on M31 tomorrow 
I'm gonna go ahead and start in on the editing process. I'm gonna spend a lot of time on it and see just how much I can pull out. But for the time being, I'm gonna go ahead and get all this back inside. Now I'm gonna get in bed. See you guys in the morning. My time with astrophotography so far has definitely been one uh, consisting of ups and downs, really. And one thing that I've really noticed is that, like the day after, you know, you always have a feeling of if the night went really well, or if it was just kind of so-so, or you know, if you had a bad night. And last night was one of those nights where everything just went perfectly from start to finish, really. Uh, Set up uh, was just a snap. And you can definitely tell just by how well this picture has came out. Uh, this has been by far my absolute best picture by a mile that I've ever, ever, ever taken um, astrophotography wise. And uh, actually whenever I finished it up, uh, whenever I finished up the editing process, I actually teared up a little bit because it's nights like that that just make this all so worthwhile. Total exposure time on this picture was right at 3 hours and 10 minutes, I believe. Uh, 63 pictures, I think, uh, was well, 63 light frames is what I had overall. And that is by far, I think, like, probably by double the amount of exposure time that I've actually managed to get on one target in a night. But, with all that being said, here's to the next time that I'm out underneath the stars. Be sure to subscribe down below. I know videos here on this channel, especially this year as I was saying, has been very few and far in between, but I'm not going anywhere, guys. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, because uh, that's where I do most of my posting and everything. And I'll try to do my best to keep you updated on there. So, as always, guys, thank you all so, so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy.